So in this section, I'm going to present some cases uh, of uh, cerebellar infections that uh, mimic uh, uh, acute uh, peripheral uh, vasculopsis. As you know, the cerebellum is supplied by uh, three arteries. Uh, the posterior inferior cerebellar artery supplies most of the caudal cerebellum, and the superior cerebellar artery, the rostral portion uh, of the cerebellum. And please remember that the ICA, anterior inferior cerebellar artery, supplies the, uh, the flocculus and the middle cerebellar peduncle and inner ear along with the anterior caudal cerebellum. So let's start with uh, this 70-year-old um, woman who presented with acute uh, vertigo and right hearing loss. So you can see a little bit of left beating spontaneous nystagmus, and the head impulse to the left is normal. but head impulse to the right is definitely abnormal. So this patient shows spontaneous nystagmus beating to the left and uh, impaired head impulse to the right along with hearing loss on the right side and vertigo. So what is your diagnosis? Labyrinthitis? Nothing else? Eye infections? Maybe, maybe. So, so what you want to see? What you want to see in the patient? Pardon? Head shaking. Head shaking. And think about hinge. Skew deviation. No skew deviation. And anything else? Left beating this time was yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Increasing during leftward gaze, but the this time was changed into right beating during rightward gaze. Now it's clear that this patient has central lesions and we can diagnose this ICA infection. There's lesion involving the, uh, the middle cerebellar peduncle, but we know that the inner ear is also damaged from the hearing loss and uh, positive head impulse test. But as I told you before, the hints may not detect all ICA infections, you know, because as you can see in this patient, the most important sign, the head impulse test is already positive in this uh, group of patients. So if there is no gauge evoked nystagmus, we cannot detect the, uh, the, the, the positive hinge in ICA infarction. That's the problem. So in this group of 18 patients with uh, ICA infarction, we evaluated all the findings and we found that in five of them, the hint was negative. So hints couldn't detect central lesions in five of the 18 patients with ICA infarction. So we add head shaking, we had head shaking, and we found central patterns of head shaking nystagmus. I'm not sure whether you are familiar with head shaking and nystagmus, but central patterns uh, uh, involve the, includes the, the nystagmus beating in the opposite direction of spontaneous nystagmus, and the head shaking nystagmus very uh, strong. Uh, with uh, only a little bit of head shaking or perverted head shaking nystagmus, the down beating head shaking nystagmus after horizontal head shaking. So we can find that kind of uh, central patterns of head shaking nystagmus in five, in three of the five patients, but we cannot detect any uh, central signs in 
in two of them. So this is why you should be very careful when you are dealing with acute vertigo and hearing loss. So in ICA infections, the patients mostly present with acute uh, unilateral combined audiovascularopathy, and it may be isolated without central you know, signs such as the sensory loss or weakness or something like that. And hints may not be enough to detect central vasculopathy in, in ICA infections. And in isolated infection, the MRI may be a normal. So you should be very careful in follow up the patients and uh, if there is any suspicion, just give them the aspirin and even in the patients with uh, the isolated audiovascular loss and positive head impulse test, you should actively uh, uh, try to find some central region like the, uh, the gauge of nystagmus or central patterns of head shaking nystagmus or something like that. Uh, the, another uh, woman, uh, 70 years old, uh, she presented with isolated uh, vertigo, spontaneous vertigo, without hearing loss. But there's a transient tinnitus for uh, 10 minutes, and she had multiple uh, vascular uh, risk factors. And when I saw her, she showed um, this um, right beating uh, nystagmus without fixation. that was uh, totally suppressed by visual fixation. So with visual fixation, you can see uh, any nystagmus. Um, it may be typical of a peripheral uh, type. But uh, when she uh, look at the left side, we, you can see a little bit of uh, right beating nystagmus. It's quite uh, strange because in the primary position, there is no nystagmus. But in the leftward gaze, there is right beating nystagmus. So uh, it can be, can't be observed in peripheral lesions. And when I asked her to uh, uh, make age to the right, you can see the right beating this time. So right beating this time is, is become more intense when look to the left and to the, uh, the right, and no knee time is in the primary gaze. That's the point. Uh, that uh, is not uh, consistent, that isn't consistent with the peripheral patterns of nystagmus. You see, it's quite subtle. To the right, normal. To the left, it looks normal, but if you look at the first um, exam, To the left, that looks something there, some kind of uh, the corrective saccade. So it wasn't so uh, evident at that time, so we measured uh, the head impulse test using the magnetic search coil technique, and we found that the head impulse gain uh, were decreased to the left and also to the right, but it's subtle. It's very subtle, so you cannot detect with bedside maneuvers. Calyx symmetric, even more interest, the VOR gains were increased during rotatory chair test. So this lady showed impaired VOR during head impulse, but normal calyx increased VOR gain during rotatory chair test. So there's a dissociated uh, patterns of VOR abnormalities. And to summarize, in this patient with isolated vertigo and spontaneous uh, right beating nystagmus, and there's a quite a funny gauge book nystagmus, had the impulse test positive in both directions, and no caloric paralysis, and increased VOR during rotatory chair test. And the MRI shows. So, where is the lesion? This is the flocculus. This is the flocculus.
so isolated follicular infections and a little bit of uh, uh, concurrent infection involving the anterior portion of tonsil. So in the past, the follicular syndrome uh, was uh, characterized by a downbeat nystagmus and gauge evoked nystagmus and impaired suppression of the spontaneous nystagmus by visual fixation and impaired smooth pursuit. And VOR was believed mostly normal, even though the, uh, the adaptation is impaired. But with these patients, we know that uh, the follicular lesion may show positive head impulse test in both directions. So in central lesions, the head impulse test may be positive in both directions, only from unilateral lesion. And the VOR impairments may be dissociated. So uh, abnormal during the head impulse test, normal caloric increased gain during the uh, rotatory chair test. So the message here is that in central lesions, also can show the impaired head impulse test and the positive head impulse test doesn't necessarily indicate combined peripheral uh, vasculopathy, especially when the corrective is saccades are very subtle. So in central lesion, it may be impaired, but the impairment is not so large as observed in peripheral uh, vasculopathy. What, why this happened? We don't know the answer yet, but we believe that the floculus is involved in the, the augmentation of the VOR only during high acceleration stimuli. This young man uh, with a history of hypertension, atrial fibrillation, present with the acute uh, sudden vertigo and imbalance. And the doctor in the emergency room uh, told me that he observed uh, left beating uh, nystagmus initially, but uh, when he was admitted the next day, I couldn't see any spontaneous nystagmus, a normal head impulse test. And uh, he only fell to the sides on attempted tandem gait. And I, when I saw him, no spontaneous nystagmus while lying down. When I turned him to the left, is a right beating uh, nystagmus. It's apogeotropic, ageotropic nystagmus that didn't subside at all, persistent. And when I turned him uh, head to the right, again, this left beating nystagmus more intense, also uh, persistent uh, more than one minute. So what is the diagnosis in this ageotropic positional nystagmus, but initially spontaneous nystagmus, spontaneous vertigo, but normal head impulse test. Is it BPPB? This patient shows isolated nodular infection. This is nodulus. So lesion involving the nodulus may show central positional nystagmus, especially the ageotropic type. So when you see the patients with acute vertigo and ageotropic positional nystagmus, you first try repositioning if there is no other signs. But it doesn't work. Then think about that the, uh, the isolated nodular infection especially when there is any severe imbalance. So um, several years ago, we uh, gathered our cases of isolated uh, nodular infections. And the interesting finding was that these patients uh, mostly mimic uh, peripheral uh, vasculopathy, acute vascular neuritis, showing this spontaneous nystagmus uh, unidirectional. But uh, if you examine them carefully, you can see other uh, central signs, including the periodic alternating nystagmus or positional 
and this time, was, but most importantly, this patient shows normal head impulse test, uh, so you don't have any uh, trouble in, in diagnosing uh, this patient. 57-year-old man with isolated vertigo but no hearing loss for one day. When I saw him the next day, he didn't show any nystagmus during visual fixation or even uh, without uh, uh, visual fixation. But if you look carefully, there's a little bit of a right beating nystagmus. A little bit of right beating nystagmus. But it isn't so obvious. No gauge evoked nystagmus during lateral gauge. But head impulse test is completely normal. Did this patient have stroke? Yes, yes, normal head impulse test, you know. And a little bit of uh, nystagmus without visual fixation. Mild imbalance during enhanced Lombok, but diffusion MRI was normal. You still believe that he got stroke? Yes. You should believe yourself. Don't be fooled by imaging. So when the diffusion weighted, routine diffusion weighted MRI is abnormal, we do thin section diffusion weighted MRI. It's three millimeters slice, thickness slice. Don't get panic. And you can see this spot here. Is this artifact? No. Because we can see this spot here on corona and, and sagittal imaging. What is this? Where is this? This is inferior cerebral peduncle. So please remember that in the far medial side of uh, middle cerebellar peduncle, there is inferior cerebellar peduncle just next to vascular nucleus. But you can say that it involved inferior cerebellar peduncle because you know the nystagmus isn't so obvious and it's ipsilegional. So in Lesions involving the vascular nucleus, this time is, is quite strong and beating to the other side. So that's the differential point. And most of the, not most, some of the papers are previously reported to involve the vascular nucleus. If you look at the findings, it actually involved the ICP, not VN. How? Oh, I can know because, you know, the direction of the nystagmus is ipsilegional in the case with uh, uh, inferior uh, cerebellar peduncular lesions. So we also reviewed the, this kind of uh, symptom complex and we find a lesion here, 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 here. All the lesions are located in the dorsolateral part of the uh, lower pons or in the, uh, in the medulla. But if, if you can see the findings here, the spontaneous nystagmus is ipsilegional and nothing much else. But if you look at the other findings, the patients fell to the lesion side, but if you evaluate the ocular tilt reaction, it's in the other side. So the association of the OTR and uh, falling is typical of inferior cerebellar infarction. No, imperial uh, cerebellar peduncular impaction. Another young lady, a 42-year-old woman with uh, hypertension and hyperlipidemia presented with acute vertigo. Um, so when I look at her with vi uh, visual fixation, a little bit of uh, scale wave jokes, but no obvious uh, nystagmus. 
But without fixation, there comes a little bit of uh, right beating nystagmus. And saccage were normal. And during the right word gauge, a little bit of uh, right beating nystagmus. And rebound nystagmus on resuming the, uh, the primary gauge. And also subtle rapt beating nystagmus. So this patient shows right beating nystagmus, a little bit of gauge book nystagmus. But if you look at the smooth pursuit, it's 42-year-old uh, woman. It is markedly impaired in both horizontal direction. So most conspicuous finding in this patient was that um, the impaired uh, smooth pursuit. But if you measure the VOR, there's a little bit of borderline decrease of the gain during the rotation test, but head impulse test were completely normal. Again, the horizontal smooth pursuit was markedly impaired, especially to the right side. And the patient shows the infarction restricted to the inferior medial portion of the cerebellum. Where is this? Where? It's a tonsil. So isolated tonsillar infarctions. So tonsil in human corresponds to the lobulus petrosus and dojal parafloculus in monkeys. So still there's some unclear, you know, uh, uh, demarcation or delineation between the floculus and parafloculus and, and tonsil, but uh, uh, this is the, uh, the, uh, the based on the consensus with the, um, the specialist. So in tonsillar uh, infarction, you can see ipsilesion or spontaneous nystagmus and gauge book nystagmus, but as I told you before, the impaired uh, smooth pursuit is mostly uh, conspicuous finding, and in contrast, the vesicle or ocular reflex is preserved. So in conclusion, in pica infarctions, uh, frequent, frequently uh, the patient present with uh, isolated vertigo but without hearing loss in pica infarction. But uh, even though the uh, spontaneous nystagmus is mostly horizontal and mimics peripheral one, you can easily diagnose, uh, diagnose the, uh, the pica infarction with negative head impulse test. And in patient with initially normal MRI, uh, the follow-up should be performed. And the last, the superior cerebellar artery infarction, but you don't uh, worry about this because, you know, uh, the isolated uh, superior cerebellar artery infarction is very rare. There's uh, concomitant infarction in the midbrain or the other part of the brain because it usually observed in the rostral uh, basilar artery syndrome, the top of the basilar syndrome. Even though patients may present uh, with vertigo in half of them and some shows uh, spontaneous this time speeding to the lesion side, but usually the patient shows dysarthria and severe imbalance in case. So the isolated vertigo is very rare. So now you can diagnose or you know uh, each cerebellar territory infarction, uh, and even you can delineate pinpoint lesion by you know evaluating the uh, spontaneous nystagmus, the head impulse, or caloric or rotation, or you see the, uh, the, the ocular tilt reaction and the uh, falling uh, direction. And I uh, emphasize once more, the lesion involving the floculus uh, may uh, show uh, impaired head impulse test, especially in both 
in both directions, and you don't need to worry about the uh, superior cerebral artery territory infarction. Thank you. Thank you again. <laughs>